visualize a beautiful gender equal world a world where difference is valued and celebrated a diverse equitable and inclusive world free of bias stereotype and discrimination let's close your arms in solidarity with international women's day and collectively we can all hashtag break the chain of bias DSRF earnestly works to develop academic excellence, foster skills and values, create civic responsibility and build global research competencies in a dynamic environment. We are immensely happy to inform you that Samyukta Research Foundation is going to unleash its three volume reader on gender studies on 8th March 2022 on the prestigious International Women's Day. brings together meticulously research writing over the past two decades from scholars students researchers and activists that encompass development health and culture in volume 1 2 and 3 respectively these precious volumes of research papers are specially designed to the bridge the gap between academics and real life realms of gender understanding in our day to day lives in a highly competitive world where the political boundaries are being strengthened and redrawn culture studies with gender relations bring together interdisciplinary advances of social science it will be available free on the samyukta india press website for 3 days that is 72 hours till 11th march 2022 Hello, welcome to the launch of the Samyukta India series on gender studies published in three volumes by Samyukta India Press. The series features essays published in the journal Samyukta since 2001. The volumes carry essays on development, health, culture and their intersectional impact on women. The questions these essays pose and the directions of thought they engender are vital to the contemporary lived realities. Now we have Dr. G S Jayashree, founder and managing trustee, Samyukta Research Foundation, delivering the inaugural address. The publication of Samyukta in the year 2001 was the culmination of a dream that I had shared with my friends from the Kerala University Women's Forum in the year 1998, when I brought out. a 12 page very thin newsletter i have the newsletter here this is it the newsletter that was brought out in the year 1998 the publication of this newsletter was a step in that direction it is our hope that this newsletter will evolve into a journal of women's studies well that is not to be in spite of my prophetic tone it is not to be this is clearly not an occasion to narrate that personal story i written about it in detail in the book women's studies narratives travels and times which was edited by professor Rekha Pandey The title of my essay in that collection of essays is When we dare to publish the experiences of an editor All this happened in the second half of the 1990s and at the beginning of the present century Samyukta was officially launched my experiences as an editor 
also reflect these links between publishing and social change. In recent years, feminist publishing or publishing for social change has come to be recognized as a developmental activity in every sense of the word. It is recognized that it requires long-term investment, often initiating research or writing on subjects that have been ignored or discounted in the academia, working closely over long periods of time with authors and not the least developing a readership receptive to ideas of gender equality. This calls for networking and a dogged perseverance that commercial publishing is unable to or is perhaps unwilling to invest in. Let me bring your attention to the fact that many of us in publishing still find difficult to come to terms with Amazon closing Westland Books and its four imprints. Obviously, there could be financial reasons behind this. If you don't make profit, you are not there. This is the logic of the capitalist economy. Yes, so there could be financial reasons behind this move, but I believe that the truth lies elsewhere. Revi Delal's unforgettable narrative, The Anatomy of Hate, built on a decade's worth of research and interviews, is the very first account of the perpetrators of 2002 and I should say a crucial new addition to the literature on violence. Is it not the publication of books like Revati Lal's that brought the guillotine down? I really don't know. Of course, Amazon is not giving any reasons. Westland is a homegrown publishing house that has been built and has grown over the last six decades of independent India. It reflects as a publishing house the aspirations of those who lived and matured in India after independence. If this can happen to Westland, what would not happen to small time publishers like us? If we, by we I mean small presses like ours, some of the India press, that survive on sheer imagination and grit, if we do not rise to the occasion and respond to the inevitable that obeys all of us in the face of economic power or political power. Believe me, both are the same, economic power and political power. They are two sides of the same coin. If we do not respond to the inevitable, there would be no space left in this country to breathe words. And to me, words are the cornerstones of democracy. Let me repeat, words are the cornerstones of democracy anywhere in the world. 
for words to be heard, for space to print, publish and read. We need what I would call people power. People power in the place of money power. It is a fast diminishing, fast disappearing space and it is exactly the precarious nature of this independent space that prompted those of us at Samyukta to collect and republish papers that came out in the journal since 2001 and place it in the political domain, to place it in the public domain, to place it for rereading. The essays collected thematically in three volumes under the rubric Development, Health and Culture summarize the feminist thought of the years since the turn of the century, the years when instead of debating on the pros and cons of globalization and taking it to the streets, we kind of settled down to the comfort of a drawing room and started watching violence on the television screens, sipping Coca-Cola. I do not want to elaborate on the contents of this three volume reader. I believe that those of you who follow me, Professor Vibhuti Patel, Professor Lakshmi Lingam and Professor Sanjukta Das Gupta, stalwarts in the academic field who have been with Samyukta since its inception will elaborate and do justice to it. Ms. Mini Sukumar, General Secretary of the Indian Association for Women's Studies, the primary forum in our country for strengthening women's studies perspectives and forging women's equality will, I hope, place a collection of essays like this in the historical context. Mini is an old friend, a leading light in the field of women's struggles and we could not think of a better person to officially launch the books. My duty, I believe, is to hint at the historical context of the late 90s when a collective of women academics in the University of Kerala came out to publish a journal of women's studies, Samyukta, that has managed to weather troubled times and has now graduated to publishing books under the imprint Samyukta India Press. Samyukta, which literally means coming together, has a mandate. We continue to uphold that mandate and further it. Fortunately, the next generation of scholars have come forward to enlarge and broaden our vision and give it new directions. We have traversed 
the distance of 22 years. There is no going back from where we have reached. The future is ours. Thank you. S. Devika, Director, Publications, Samyakta Research Foundation, will place the spotlight on the Samyakta India series on gender studies. I'm Dr. Devika. The world as we know it today goes through upheavals, constantly reshaping itself. In an era of shifting paradigms, the notion of identity too has become a fluid entity. In this context, terms such as gender and culture elude definition and demand fresh and inclusive perspectives. However, the confluence of gender and culture can generate new knowledge that would contest the power relations entrenched in the social fabric and call for corrective measures. Much work, it must be said, has been done in academics. Uh, the amount of print literature on the subject is a pointer in this direction. It is here that a journal like Samyukta that has been in publication since January 2001 from Trivandrum in India uh, has carved a niche for itself. Samyukta, a journal of gender and culture, is a biannual peer-reviewed academic journal that promotes a fresh look at the history of gender or culture or the intersections of both using the tools of diverse disciplines like language studies, or history or anthropology or political science, thereby yielding interesting insights into the making of the modern world and its contested identities. Through rigorous questioning of deep biases and entrenched prejudices, the journal has emerged as a leading publication from India in the field of gender and cultural studies. Papers published in Samhita have always examined the cultural dimensions that impact gender roles. A galaxy of scholars from India and abroad, like Margaret Badran, Uma Chakravarti, Imrana Khadir, Ritu Menon, Elena Sen, to name a few, have acted as guest editors for the journal. Samikta India Press is the publication wing of Samikta Research Foundation that is coming out with this three volume series on gender studies women in development, women in health, and women in culture. The series puts together select papers published in the journal over a period of almost 20 years. The first volume, Women and Development, situates contemporary debates on women and development in the context of gender identity and gender representations vis-a-vis -vis globalization, demographic transition, labor, access to resources, social mobility, political participation, and so on. The papers promote an interdisciplinary inquiry into how different dimensions of social, political, and cultural life intersect with categories of gender and sexuality to determine the development quotient. The second volume, Women and Health, provides an interdisciplinary perspective on the gender dynamics affecting health and access to health care. Wellness and healthcare had been an exclusive domain of the health services, but today, as we know, the philosophy of medicine has merged with that of humanities to reconfigure their symbiotic relationship. The essays included in this volume cover a range of sociological concerns over women's physical and mental health, abuse within the family and at workplace, violence against women, poor health of women under circumstances of poverty, unemployment, childbearing and rearing and so on. The third volume, Women in Culture, covers a wide spectrum of areas from women's movements and Islamic feminism to feminist writing, rewriting his stories into her stories, celebrating the queer and staging gender. The essays discuss the equations of power as represented in literature, art, theatre, cinema, rituals and social customs. So what we have attempted in this series, to put it succinctly, is to showcase the best minds that have engaged with gender and society, ushering in new thinking in Indian feminist thought. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
It is a momentous occasion and a matter of great honor for us that Professor Mini Sukumar, General Secretary, Indian Association of Women's Studies and Member Planning Board Government of Kerala, is releasing the three volumes. Over to you, ma'am. Hi. I am so happy to be here to release these three volumes of books published by Samyukta. I am so privileged to release this important documentation of debates happened in the last two decades in the field of gender studies. These volumes represent the debates and the interconnected debates happened in the field of gender, health, development and culture. All these uh, articles are published in the journal of in the journal Samyukta and it is selected by the editors. The series is named Samyukta India series on gender studies and it is uh, jointly edited by Dr. G. S. Jayasri and S. Devika. Samyukta was started as a journal of gender and culture in 2001. At that time, it was a real challenge to start such a journal which is focusing seriously on the research in women's studies. As everyone know, now women's studies has emerged as an, in, as an important area of interdisciplinary research. It was evolved from the women's movement and also the individual and collective journey of women and women's experiences. In India, it started in 1980s and even before that from the publication of Towards Equality Report, we can trace the history of gender studies, the formal history of women's studies from that point. Now it has been an important area of research and teaching in higher education and uh, Samyukta has contributed much towards this. And this, this is a journey of collectiveness in a male-dominated world of publishing also. Samyukta has ventured into the challenging world of publishing for the last few years. And Samyukta has been successful in nurturing the spirit and efficiency of researchers towards good research. And also they made their mark in the field of publishing. These three volumes were prepared from the past uh, issues of Samyukta and each volume represents major debates happened in that area and it covers almost all major writers in that area and there is a foreword written by an eminent person in that field. For example, the volume of Women and Development the foreword is given by Dr. Vibhuti Patel and there is 25 articles on women and development in that particular volume. Like that, the, the volume of health is, the foreword is given by Dr. Imrana Khadir, a major stalwart in that area. So this is a treasure to every person working in the field of gender studies. And it should be a must read for our students in gender studies and also in social sciences. And uh, my best wishes to these volumes to reach to every interested person, every interested reader across the country and beyond the country. And I hope Samyukta will bring many more such volumes in future. All the best. Professor Vibhuti Patel, former professor, Advanced Center for Women's Studies, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, and former head of the Department of Economics at SNDT Women's University, will introduce the volume on development. It gives me an immense happiness to congratulate Dr. G. S. Jaishri and Dr. S. Devika, editors of three volumes under Sanyukta India series. This extremely valuable gender studies is uh, all encompassing so far as women's life worlds are concerned. They capture intersectionalities of caste, class, 
religion, culture, gender, and geographies across the world with an overarching concern for transnational solidarity. Volume 1 is titled as Women in Development that focuses on macroeconomy and connects it with the crucial concerns at meso and micro levels. Volume 2 is on women and health that is used the, uh, using the framework of life cycle approach that covers nutritional needs, well-being, reproductive health, mental health, medical technologies, and violence against women as a public health concern. Volume third is very exhaustive and it uh, focuses on gender and culture that brings to the fore nuanced an analysis of women's movement, uh, also uh, deconstructs the autonomous women's movement, provides interactive space for feminist activism, and also theory and practice of feminism are captured uh, with special focus on Islamic feminism, feminist analysis of Fatima Narcissus, uh, Manis's complex trajectory in literary contribution, triple talaq debate, gendered nation uh, and Bengali Muslim women's association in the 20th century, invisibilization of women in the globalization discourse and feminist contributions to globalization uh, that transcends generalization and makes an effort to see more than just taking women to the macro picture, quote unquote. Uh, and the sections on her story provides in-depth analysis on micro studies, on women's narratives in Punjab and Lucknow, and the section on rewriting history captures efforts of women publishers and creative writers. Question of power, uh, is also an, uh, taken up very seriously and it deconstructs the concepts of power, equality and politics of social aspirations with specific grounded theories. Uh, social ritual, uh, social uh, customs and rituals, uh, celebrating queer, sexualities, bhakti, the ethics and aesthetics of bhakti movement, staging gender, uh, the women in theater and drama, gender perspectives in cinema, performing lives, performing gender, trying uh, narratives of trauma and survival are refreshing in its perspective and they are extremely uh, educative. I would like to focus on uh, volume one where, because my specialization is uh, economics of gender and development. Uh, the volume one on women and development begins with an overview of gender and development debates with specific focus on discourses in, in uh, discourses in the uh, social movements that encompass critique of trickle-down theory, overview of three approaches right from the 1975 International Women's Year, uh, which focus on women in development, women and development, gender and development, and also understanding of human development index, gender development index, and gender empowerment measure are provided. Uh, it, uh, it also go, it provides the in-depth analysis of women and human development, theory and practice in India, and a chapter on building capabilities of women. Uh, the chapter on women and global economy focuses on the material reality of women across the uh, uh, different parts of the country and also the intersectionalities uh, are captured. African experience of devastation caused by capitalist development is captured in a chapter debt to women concept. And it also focuses the importance of care economy and why uh, in the uh, macroeconomic analysis, in the uh, computation of GDP, we need to include the contribution which is made by care economy. And in the current context of COVID pandemic, where the care economy has acquired tremendous significance. I think this is a very, very important uh, chapter. Alternatives to globalization and more than fair trade, which also focuses on the reflections on just sustainable and caring global trade uh, for development of women, which is possible uh, if we give up the neoliberal logic. Gender lens on millennium development goal is provided in the chapter that evaluates all eight goals, uh, eradication of hunger, uh, universalization of education, empowerment of women, reduction and control over uh, 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 diseases such as tuberculosis, HIV, 
and viral infected diseases and uh, um, and also the reduction in maternal mortality improvement in child health uh, and uh, environmental sustainability and the global peace all are examined with the touchstone of gender equality women's demographic transition this section captures predicament of asian women in international migration gulf emigration of women in kerala demographic transition and women's empowerment in kerala and some of the new evidences uh, are brought out here and gender aging and social security the much neglected area is also given very great importance in this uh, section uh, the section on women in the labor force is also examining uh, uh, gender gap and the reasons and the uh, historical legacy and the current uh, concern of declining work participation of women uh, in india uh, in the demand uh, of globalized world uh, how women home based workers are treated as a cheapest labor and how uh, traditional values are utilized to for the super exploitation of women and the profit sharing by the international multinational companies and transnational companies women workers in textile industry and the housewives in sex trade which is sex, uh, which becomes a desperate strategy to save their household is also very very eye opening and very important because how the industrial workers who are paid less than the survival wage their wives have to resort to this kind of a stigmatized work the uh, women and environment that whole section is bringing out uh, the legalization of state en encroachment by reducing the environmental standards and which focuses on the mining area the special references on the mining policy in india and also the question of the survival strategy and the erosion of survival base and the livelihood base of women due to globalized environmentalism and uh, also uh, the whole alternative rhetoric strategy as eco feminist practice for transformation of perception and the use of energy in a residential built environment from the uh, kerala that is also a very 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 educative uh, uh, chapter women and politics of exclusion that deals with the control of resources and the uh, politics of exclusion and how feminists have responded to this kind of uh, patriarchal assault uh, it also focuses on inheritance of law, uh, of laws that is political exclusion of women in the electoral politics and hegemonic ideology of empire of capital versus food security right to work access to, access to natural resources and that is with a with a case study of nagaland which brings out succinctly that how women are losing their survival base politics of exclusion also also provides the women's heroic struggles in singur nandigram and lalgar Uh, to save their livelihood base uh, she died to shelter and development of women they are the extremely important concerns of women in the 21st century uh, and all over the world there is a focus on right land rights as well as right to shelter that is also captured in this section women in political exclusion focuses on how women are uh, how the whole political economy of uh, reservation of women in the panchayati raj institution and how it is still a work in progress because when it comes to legislature and parliament there is a tremendous resistance to share power uh, contemporary women's uh, political participation is analyzed with the nuances and the regional uh, uh, differentiation reservation and social mobility uh, theoretical construct is a very important analytically rigor rigorous chapter implementation of women component plan in rural governance which provides the how uh the ninth five year plan strategy of providing the way we have a scheduled caste plan tribal sub plan we need to have a, uh, the the women component plan and in what way gender responsive budgeting and women component plan have converged in kerala which has taken a lead uh, in, in terms of uh, implementing gender responsive budget most judiciously with massive allocation uh, for of budgetary resources and the converting gender commitments into financial commitments Uh, the last chapter interstate comparative analysis uh, of development of women in kerala and andhra is extremely important that what kind of development trajectory that you that that you adopt which would bring more uh, uh, well being and human development i think that is a very eye opening uh, chapter Uh, veteran women studies scholars women's rights activists literature 
public intellectuals with professional specialization such as doctors, lawyers, scientists, researchers across three generations have contributed their insightful and intellectually rigorous and well-documented chapters in this volume. This timely publication will, is of a great value to students and scholars, teachers and researchers, uh, policy makers and practitioners, and all citizens who want to get knowledge and gendered worldview on wide range of challenges faced by the contemporary world. Once again, I congratulate Dr. G. S. Jayashri and Dr. S. Devika for accomplishing this mammoth task by capturing 40 years of feminist discourses in not only in India, but in several parts in the Middle East and in Africa, in Europe, and uh, with a very important message of need for solidarity accord, uh, across intersectionalities. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I request Professor Lakshmi Lingam, Dean and Professor with the School of Media at Tata Institute of Social Sciences to take us through the volume on health. Good evening. International Women's Day wishes to everybody here, to the Samyukta team, to the panelists and to the viewers. I am delighted to be part of this event where we are releasing three volumes being brought out by Samyukta under the gender series with titles Women in Development, Women in Health and Women in Culture. Papers published over the past 20 years have been very carefully identified, updated and curated by the Samyukta team. All these volumes mark the field and its various discourses. I have contributed to the women in health field and I am happy to be speaking about it. This volume marks the broad contours of the women in health field. Feminists in academia and in the women's movements over the years have contributed to the field which is truly interdisciplinary and now is known more as gender in health. This trajectory from women and health to gender and health also marks the critical questions that have been asked over the past four decades by feminists. Some of the interesting questions that stay in my mind and they continue to guide me in my research are questions like what is at the root of women's poor health? How do we inform social determinants of health with questions to do with caste, class and gender. How do we differentiate between maternal health and women's health? Why are Indian women anemic? What are the structural roots of violence against women? How do we understand public policy from a gender perspective? What are women's knowledges around their bodies and healing? How do we recover these and how do we make sure that women's bodies are not medicalized? How do we go beyond the understanding of gender, beyond the binary and so on and so forth. There are 28 papers in this volume on women and health. The papers span on a wide spectrum of subjects that inform our understanding of what kind of perspective we should have when we look at women's health. There are papers that have a feminist critique of medicine and also biological deterministic ways in which health is understood, where the gendered aspects of differential exposure to men and women and differential outcomes for men and women are often ignored. There are papers that also highlight the material realities of women that actually contribute towards their poor health, which again is ignored by health research as well as medical research. There are interesting papers that tell us that understanding of health cannot be equated to mere reduction in maternal mortality, infant mortality, improvements in immunization or the acceptance of small family norm. In fact, states like Kerala that have attained all these have very high levels of morbidities, suicide rates and also mental health problems. Therefore, there is a need to have a more holistic understanding of health 
is what these papers tell us several papers also cover issues of violence against women both public and private invasive contraceptives population control policies and implications of these on women there are bunch of interesting papers that look at the traditional birth attendants and the kind of support that they give to women who are having their birthing experience as opposed to the existing push for institutional deliveries which tend to leave the issue of personal care and also respectful childbirth completely to the background so the papers that are part of this volume actually inform us in many many ways and also open opportunities for fresh ways of looking at things and also identifying new research problems that can be further studied and inquired i'm delighted to release this volume on women and health and i'm sure it's going to be widely circulated read and much to be learned from congratulations to the samyukta team for maintaining very high standards and continuing to do their good work all the very best thank you thank you ma'am now we have professor sanjukta dasgupta professor and former head department of english and dean faculty of arts university of calcutta bringing to us the raison d'etre of the volume on culture hello everyone on this very special day 8th march marking the international women's day i'm truly honored and humbled to be invited to launch the third volume titled women and culture of the three volume samyukta india series gender studies reader published by the samyukta india press in fact the editor gs jayashri has been a friend since the very first issue of samyukta had been published way back in 2001 samyukta has indefatigably persevered to address and critique gender studies in the 21st century it continues to interrogate the centuries old practices and problematics of gender inequality gender injustice and gender bias in both developing and developed highly industrialized nations I'm sure the third volume in this gender studies reader titled Women and Culture will be able to delve deeply into the gendered intersections of caste, class, religion, public health, education, unemployment and employment issues and sexual orientation. In each case it is the micro unit of society the family from where gender discrimination bias and body shaming begin cultural traditions practices customs and their representations in patriarchal religious epics and religious texts socially condition and culturally entrap women within the romanticized and glorified institutions of the patriarchal family institutions of marriage and religion such academic initiatives and cutting edge discourse focused on liberating women from robotic adherence to cultural practices and beliefs will lead to empowering women to become active agents of social change and women will be able to achieve both critical and creative freedom of choice and expression instead of chronicling women's ill being we need to celebrate the well being of women in the 21st century which can only be achieved through gender sensitization lead thank you ma'am The three volumes on women development health and culture as realized by the Samyukta India Press is an immense body of work that spans nearly two and a half years of dedicated research by people who have made a mark in their respective fields some of whom have actually joined us today to make this day a special one and to emphasize the relevance and magnitude of these works on behalf of Samyukta Research Foundation 
मैं श्रीतमा भट्टाचार्य एम फिल स्कॉलर इन विमेन स्टडीज यादवपुर यूनिवर्सिटी एंड करंटली इंटर्न एट समयुक्ता रिसर्च फाउंडेशन विल प्रपोज द फॉर्मल वोट ऑफ थैंक्स Thank you, professors, for making time for us today. You have been with Samyukta since the very beginning and have witnessed and contributed to our growth. Uh, we would like to take a moment to thank you for the unwavering support you have extended our way. Uh, we would like to begin our note of thanks by thanking Professor Mini Sukumar, her work on liberalisation and HIV in Kerala. engendering local development plans making space for feminist social critique in contemporary kerala have been enriching us over the years uh, moving on we would like to thank professor vibhuti patel who introduced the women and development volume for us professor patel's work on gender economics labor economies social infrastructure and human rights have inspired us time and again uh, next we would like to thank professor lakshmi lingam for making time for us today we are deeply motivated by her work on gender and public health and policy gender and sexuality digital technologies gender and development she introduced the women and health volume for us uh we would like to thank professor shongjukta das gupta for the consistent support she has shown us her path breaking work on media gender and popular culture gender intercourse fiction and films american women writers of the south to name a few have enriched us immensely she introduced the third volume for us which is the volume on women and culture finally team samyukta would like to thank the interns and fellows who have diligently worked with us to make this tripartite publication on gender studies possible uh, we would like to thank sonia jainair head of the department of english in all, of all saints college Varsha Basir, uh, Angela Sebastian, Samra Fuad, Sritama Bhattacharjo, Minu Melvin, Minakshi S, Vidhu Priya, and Rose Davis, Ashwati C Menon, uh, George Matthew, Eshaena George, Kiran Krishna, and Jobin A S. Team Samyukta would like to thank all of you, along with the ones who are attending the book launch at the moment. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day everyone. Thank you.